We mm-hmm. must look to the future, having in mind the facts of the past. And Lee is present with us today to handle both and more beautifully. Thank Good man. to see you, Mr. C. I'm a pleasure, man. Always a yeah. pleasure on my end. Yeah. Well. Get my ears back in. Do I should do this. Beautiful day, man. Oh my word! In the shade, yeah. it's it's in the upper 80s right now, but in the shade, it, it hides that fact. Hopefully, it's uh, lower 70s. <laughs> I'm hoping. <laughs> Lee met Johnny Mathis, and Lee has a picture with Johnny Mathis. Sadly, we're not near a museum-like apartment right now. We're, we're near it in an undisclosed uh, location in Eastern Market, but uh, uh, you met Johnny Mathis. Yes, uh, he was one of the early first people that we had press parties at the time. Really? And uh, he was next to the library on Woodward. It used to be an apartment, but it's still there. Okay. And uh, they had it over there. So yeah, we met wow. Johnny Mathis. Uh-huh. Back. Well, uh, okay, yeah. so you told me before uh, a press party with Nina Simone and she was very closed off. Yeah. Was Johnny Mathis, do you remember if he was more engaging with everyone? No, Johnny Mathis was really nice. We took pictures. Uh, in fact, there's a picture with uh, uh, one of our employees at the time because it was Monroe Music at the time. Before you took before over I fully. Took over. Yeah, you and, ran uh, it. Yvonne. Been- which was married to LeBaron Taylor, we talked about her. Right. She was working for us at the time. And she's standing along beside Johnny Mathis. And uh, I didn't get a picture with me. I did take a picture, but I didn't, I don't know what I did with the copy of the yeah. picture with them. And he he was, sort of have, had a little bit of an Elvis vibe to him visually. Didn't he a little bit? Like the way he did his hair and his, his uh, sideburns? Well, he just, Johnny Mathis has always been Johnny Mathis from day one. You're right. His and own person, his own style. sweater and things like that, and he had the voice. Oh. And when I lived in Arkansas, I wanted to sing that kind of song, singing like that. Yeah. And that was a friend of mine. Uh, he, he passed on his name, Willie Caver. Okay. He was my, my friend, and uh, he could sing. And he could sing like Johnny Mathis and that King Cole. Man. They had a tune out. Uh, gee, but it's great after being out late, walking my baby, baby back, back home. home. Well, that kind of sh- singing that I like because I didn't care for the blues yeah. at that time. I think I stated that once before. Yeah. And uh, I've always liked Johnny Mathis and Nat King Cole. Speaking of the old days in Arkansas, uh, um, you liked Elvis when you were living in Arkansas, and you saw Elvis when you were living in Arkansas. Is that right? No, I was living, uh, I didn't see him in Arkansas. I liked him in Arkansas. Oh, okay. Uh, because I've always had access to uh, uh, radio. In fact, when I was driving cab, I think I had a little battery radio I had on my desk. Because radios didn't come in cars automatically. Mm-hmm. In fact, the guy was talking to me, <laughs> I was playing music in front of the store, and I was Ray Charles, and he was, got into it. He was parked in the street there and he says, uh, back in the day they didn't have cars with radio yet. <laughs> I said, they didn't. <sighs> they really didn't. Yeah. You see, but I had a radio. Uh, you had to pay extra. It wasn't standard. Yeah. Well, I bought one to put on my dashboard because I listened to country and western. That's all we could listen to down there. You would hear Lawrence Welk, uh, 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 Mitch Miller. Uh, I knew about Count Basie. I knew about... Um, Joe William, yeah, he did his own Mighty Mighty Man or something like that, but you know that's as far as I had got. I didn't like the blues type of thing. That's so wild. When you were young, back home in Arkansas, you would listen to Lawrence Welk band, you know, uh, Champagne Music, I think he called it. Later, only to become best of friends with mm-hmm. his first Paul and only Humphrey, black yeah. drummer. Yeah. Paul Humphrey, I wow! Did. I mean, Paul he, Humphrey like family. You know, he was with Lawrence Welk. In fact, the only black to play ever played with Lawrence Welk in the band. Yeah. And his daughter Pierre, I think that's Pierre. I remember when she was born. She's a doctor. She, I think she's a doctor now. She might be a, a doctor or lawyer in California. Wow. And uh, I don't talk to him. Or I, I kind of miss the number or something <sighs> since Paul had been gone. Get in touch, please. Yeah. But she danced on Lawrence Welk. Sure, wow. New Year's night. Wow. Miss Black, I think, they danced on the show. She was about 
eight, nine years old. Oh, so I'm sure you could look it up. It's so beautiful. She tap danced. She wasn't. Wow. She performed. Not no. She, performed. Not, not just like in the background dancing. Yeah. She was a featured player. Wow. Right, well, you know, Lawrence Welk was that one, that kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, You couldn't go in that nine to fuck the, yeah, the yeah. butt grind. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it wasn't, wasn't the place. It wasn't the time, is it? You know? Or time, yeah. Uh, uh, speaking of uh, 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 different t- different times uh, and, and the present, you know, just like we, mm. we had an introduction earlier, Lee talked on the phone with a woman that worked at his store, and she told Lee things about Lee's store that Lee had forgotten such as the band spent the whole day at Lee's store. This band was called Main Ingredient. Yeah, she, I was talking to her a couple of days, a few weeks ago, you know. She's telling me about that. And, uh, but I, I had forgotten it. The Main Ingredient, I think, was Harvey Fuqua. Oh, yeah, it, uh, 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 formed by Harvey Fubar. And then Fu, he Fuqua, I think. And he Fubar. was with Motown, I think. Harvey was married to Barry's sister, and he, he, I think he was the one who got Kim Weston do the, 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 the uh, black song about um, the National Anthem. Lift what? Every Voice. Right. Uh, and then uh, I, uh, after he split up with uh, Barry Gordy's sister or whoever, um, he started producing music, came out with Kim Weston, Lift Every Voice, and sing Temptation Shall Not Ring or something like that. Uh, it was a black and white anthem that was a big. Yeah, they sang it yesterday. It, really? It, it, yeah, it was. It was our. When I was in the south, we sang that. That was our national anthem at the time. Yeah. Yeah. And so, but uh, he made it famous again, popular with, in the black community. Yeah. And I'm almost positive it's Harvey Fuqua. And one day I was walking downtown, walking. Um, I was down at CVS on Wilbur there. Yeah. And this guy passed by and he said acknowledged me and he knew who I was and he said his dad he was his Harvey was his son I believe that's what he told me you know man yeah and uh, but he remembered me yeah, because he would come in there and he was that's in our early days and he would always come in and wasn't many black in that kind of business at the time yeah and he would come in and always talk to Florence Keywell at the time yeah you know and I would just start working there you know but I remember him Harvey Fuqua <sighs> and, and um, oh and then I was gonna say uh, back to the lady that worked at your store a few weeks ago you got in touch with her I'd, we, I, I would love to and, and if, is, if she's willing to sit down with her and you or just you and her I can be off camera doesn't matter yeah. she was the one that when Teddy Pendergrass uh, allegedly ripped off Harold Melvin and the Blue, Mo- Blue Notes. She brought that group to the attention of the store because the workers would debate about who was the best in the music scene. Yeah, well, well, well you know, we always had our favorite artists and we always compare and that kind of thing. But she liked how Melvin had an album out. <laughs> Wake Up Everybody, I know, it was one of them. Yeah, albums. and that was really a big thing. At oh, the I time. love that. I've, I love Wake I sampled up that everybody. album. I you sampled know, it right. But Here. Hal Melvin, it was Hal Melvin and the Blue Notes. Yeah. Teddy Pendergrass wasn't mentioned in there. Yeah. I don't think. <laughs> but Barbara liked Teddy Pendergrass. In particular. She yeah. saw something in him. I think Teddy came out with that. But anyway, at the time, he was doing the thing at, I mean, Felt's Lounge on Oakland, on Oakland in that area. And they left, the money got exchanged, somebody left him. <laughs> yeah. Dry, dry or whatever. Man. Yeah. I, I was going to say, one day Lee was going to CVS in his scooter, and Lee gave a guy a card, and the guy said his dad was Harvey Fubar. Fubar and then he went, and that he went to Lee's store a lot back in the day. He used to come into the store a lot and talk to Miss Keywell. This girl worker was with Florence in the early days, uh, and uh, when she Googled Florence Keywell, that's how she found Lee. So yeah. I guess if you Google Florence Keywell, you come up. Hey, I'm proud I, of that. Yeah. You know, it, uh, it's, it's a, a good, happy, positive history. Ah!